we're going to be spending a lot of time dealing with fields, and knowing how much field we have is kind of a big deal. Oftentimes, just knowing the strength of a field at some single point in space is fine, but sometimes we want to be able to quantify the amount of field over a whole region. That's where the concept of flux comes in. Flux is a measure of how much field penetrates some area. Think of it as kind of a measure of how many field lines are going through a shape. Here's some flux through some shape. Here's less total flux on account of the shape being smaller. And here's more total flux on account of the field being stronger. Also note that orientation matters. If you have, for example, a flat sheet and the field lines go along either side of the sheet without going through it, you don't get any flux. With that in mind, the mathematical definition of flux takes into account field magnitude, area, and the orientation of the one with respect to the other. We dot the electric field with some differential area and integrate over the entire area of interest. Now, you might notice that we're writing the differential area dA as a vector, so let's talk about how to represent areas with vectors. A flat sheet can be characterized reasonably well by specifying its size and its orientation. And since vectors have sizes and directions, it's not too hard to associate a vector with an area. The area vector for a particular surface has length equal to the numerical area of the surface and points perpendicular to the surface, also known as normal to the surface. A special area vector is the unit normal n hat. A vector that points perpendicular to the surface and has unit length. Its job is to describe the orientation of the surface and nothing else. Notice how that definition of the area vector plays nice with our flux definition. We get the maximum flux when the field lines are going straight through some area, which is to say the field lines are perpendicular to the area. But in that situation, the field lines are parallel to the area vector, meaning that the dot product of E and A is at a maximum. Now, here's the tricky part. If you have a curved surface, the orientation of the surface is variable, so it's often necessary to chop the area into lots of little infinitesimal bits, each one of which has some infinitesimal dA associated with it. This can also be a useful tool when calculating flux integrals using some variable E field, as we'll see in the associated worked example.